Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Episode 26 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy. And um, very much like a Pelucranos world eater, I prepared this in like five seconds here. Um, at, at, at the holidays, I feel like I'm the world eater because <laughs> I eat everything. <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle. And like Gwen Stefani, I hate land destruction more than anything else in magic. That's my manas. M Y M A N A S. <laughs> Please listen carefully. This is the, the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering, but especially Commander. Oh, especially. Especially. Not mostly. Mostly, especially, specifically. Specifically, Commander, sure. And lots of other things, but. Majoritatively. Majoritatively. Yep, yeah, making up words now, too. I like that. What's on the agenda this week? Uh, today, uh, we are going to talk about some of the updates for MTG Arena. State of the game article for December. Yeah, lots and lots of stuff to talk about there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we're going to talk about some um, commander etiquette and some pet peeves that we have, maybe you have, um, you know, specifically because we have the upcoming uh, Command Fest DC. Yeah, we, and we won't be there, unfortunately. But um, for some of you that will be... Um, We'll talk about our experiences and, and what we see and how, mm-hmm. how we would fix them or what we do, what we personally do mm-hmm. to avoid causing other people that pain. Yeah. And then we also have uh, our recurring segment of Commander of the Week where Andy is going to talk about one of his decks. My new budget deck, Talsimer, friend to wolves. Friend to wolves. Yeah, not elves. He's an elf. He's an not elf. A wolf. Has a wolf. Likes wolves. Rides wolf. He does. His wolf fights pretty good wolf and it's good stuff so we had the mtg arena state of the game article for december come out and there's a lot of stuff in there there's a uh it starts out with a performance check-in um it said that they wanted to start things off by touching on their progress with performance improvements and this month is a little shorter than previously because their november game update showed significant improvements in all areas that they were monitoring so uh frame frames per second drops um, before the November update, 80, 88% of players were ish, uh, experiencing those problems. After that November update, there were only 25%. And then um, they reference hitches. Um, and then it says that that is uh, related to memory allocation and usage, uh, a.k.a. memory leaks. Mm-hmm. Um, and 40% of players were experiencing issues before November and 6% after November. Um so they're hoping that players have begun to see improvements and that the December game update will bring a few additional chan- uh, changes um, targeted towards their memory allocation. So now the only time you're going to see FPS drops is when you have like 100,000 tokens on the field. All Which the I haven't time. done yet. And I'm really sad I haven't <laughs> done that because uh, I've seen it. You know, the number of people that, it's, uh, that post screenshots, I'm like, how did you get away with that? Because yeah. most people would scoop the game before you actually get to see that many. Yeah. But then it's just like, you know what? If you're going to do it, I'm going to watch you do every single one. I do like that. And I like that some people, they, when I used to play the um, uh, Flood of Tears combo deck, mm-hmm. people would just let it go. Mm-hmm. I was like, I want to see how quickly they can do this. Cause do they start spamming your go, your go, your go? Thanks. No, thanks. please don't do that. <laughs> I have in the past had the urge to say your go, your go. Like, come on. <laughs> I was playing against cat combo today, which is oven and, and cauldron cat. Was it Jund? or Mono no Black? it was stupid i don't know what it was okay. it was three witches oven and one stupid cat and they took like six minutes a turn it felt like mm-hmm. and i so badly wanted to say your go <laughs> please <laughs> just tap the oven sack the, the food tap the oven sack the food i mean it's you can do it very quickly sure they did not do it very quickly Mm-mm. and so and i've seen other streamers other people in the community say it's a very good deck but it makes for bad bad content and bad viewing it does right because you have people that don't do it quickly and then also Mm -hmm. there's people that are more cautious and they're like well if i do this are they going to remove something right i get it yeah but i had nothing Mm -hmm. and so i did end up scooping so So it's like well you you have the win i was at nine life and they could do it three times per turn yeah That, that puts me at three and unless i could gain life with an absorb i was playing blue white yeah i wasn't doing anything nope so um yeah, unless you have all that stuff going on, there isn't isn't a whole lot to talk about there. Um, 
we are in the holidays and they have dubbed this uh, with bra brawlidays brawlidays events so the announcement says there was a, a desire for more folks to play brawl not surprising no more frequently than just wednesday please not not surprising uh, please. So they're adding an event from December 12th through J- January 16th as a w- uh, with a one-time entry fee of either 10,000 gold or 2,000 gems. So you can play Brawl as much as you want during this period of time and that this is their first experiment with a long-term style pass and they're expecting to do this more in the future. Yeah. Now, you do you do get a card with this, correct? You do. So um, you get reese or rise the redeemed which they're adding to historic Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. very good in commander it's an elf that makes more elves yep and then it doesn't have overrun or just makes more and more and more actually so it it makes a one one green elf warrior token for two and a hybrid green white and you tap him yeah uh or you can pay four hybrid green white hybrid green white and uh, make a copy of a token for each token that you have. So you double essentially. Yeah, but it's doubling. but it's any token, not just your elves. Your elf so like warriors. treasure tokens and whatever token clues you have, mm-hmm. you get all of them. Yeah, I, I I have that deck in commander. Yeah, so yeah, he does, and it's very good. Mm-hmm. And so they're adding that for brawl. While well, they're adding it to historic, but you're going to be able to play it in brawl. Yeah, it's so kind of a weird thing. um. It is a little weird because Brawl is meant to be standard legal cards only. Mm-hmm. I'm not complaining because Brawl is fun and um, Reese is great. Yeah. Rise. Reese or right? Reese Reese's 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 pieces? Reese's pieces, rises, guises. Rises, guises. That's, that's, you should name your deck Rises, guises. <laughs> rises when you do your guises. Commander of the Week, yes. <laughs> it's going to be that. Um, so uh it's weird yeah but i'm not going to complain that it's there i just i will i i'm expecting probably to see a lot more of it as the brawl general yep because it costs one hybrid mana Mm -hmm. on turn one and then it goes crazy with tokens which we've got lots of token support yep with green white a lot of play amerisol um soul of the accord right now yep so it's just instead of her being the commander it's just a a better commander for mm-hmm. that, I guess. Mm-hmm. If you're going with the token strategy, which, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if if you had her as your commander before, you, you can you can you put her in the 99, you put Riss as the commander, or vice versa. Or they're you both s- going to do the same thing, yeah. Or in the I'm sorry, in the 59. This is brawl. Yeah, in the 59, yes. not the 99, not the 99. Um, so everyone who joins that event though uh, will earn one copy of Rise of the Redeemed after winning one game, and then you'll be able to craft the rest for a play set to play in historic at a later date. Yeah. And then the other thing that I learned today, I don't know why I didn't know this is that you can actually play historic brawl direct challenge only. So you can play all of those cards Mm -hmm. in brawl against friends, which obviously we don't have the friends list yet, but um, there's a website that you can use to actually find folks. If you don't have people that you can play with um, that, you know, yeah, I, say, I don't. I don't know if there's other websites, but the one that I was able to find quickly is ArenaBrawl.net. Um, and yeah, so when you do it, when you do a direct match against somebody, uh, you don't have to follow the normal bannings and and uh, rule sets. Uh, and since the card pool is opened up to historic now in Arena, you can play historic brawl. But they ask you to obviously follow the the list of cards that are banned. And right. Oko's banned in Brawl regular, so yeah, Oko yeah. and and Sorcerer's Spyglass. They ask you to not play those, but please I, honor that. Cause it's... Yeah, don't don't ruin a good thing. Um, and that kind of makes it so they have their own their own, their own matchmaking on this website. So you can say I want to play Historic Brawl, and you go kind of into a matchmaking, and they'll send you a, a play a player friends li- link or a code, and you put in there, and then you can play them. Um, I still don't think you can get your um, rewards, like your daily rewards, by doing the direct matches. I I don't I don't know. I, I don't. I would assume not. Yeah, I don't think. You, but I mean, if you're if you want to play brawl outside of Wednesdays, uh, I highly recommend doing that. And then if you want to try out historic brawl, um, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. And speaking of, you mentioned the ban list. Yeah. Um, there's a new concept coming to um, arena in historic, um, and that is. Um, coming in the form of a suspension. Yes, card suspension. So instead of a banning, it's it's called a suspension. Um, and it said that it's it's the idea that the card will be suspended 
and will not be legal and is unplayable in the format, but their intention is to be more flexible with the cards that are suspended and win compared to more, uh, like, I guess, compared to more traditional banning. So suspensions are um, a temporary measure lasting for a historic ranked season at which time then then they will either remove it from the list or move it to being fully banned. Mm-hmm. And so we have four suspensions now. Um, none of them are surprising. They are banned in other formats. Yep. So Oko, Thief of Crowns, Field of the Dead, Once Upon a Time, and Veil of Summer. So um, it says if you're interested in learning more about the banned versus uh, suspended philosophies and how the two differ, as well as a deeper dive into why these cards were suspended, you should check out... Um, their companion piece um, state of the game named historic suspension announcement. So we'll post links um, after this episode to the state of the game uh, announcement, mm-hmm. but it is a very interesting concept and I do like it. I, they do have a lot of freedom to do these kinds of fun things like that on arena where they don't have that freedom in paper. Now I have been told that there's other games. So I don't play hearthstone at okay. all. And I've been told hearthstone has, has ways to, I guess, in a way like nerf or make weaker mm-hmm. certain certain cards like on the fly. Right. So I haven't done obviously fact check me because I haven't I haven't looked at this. No, but I've true. been told that they can take a card and go if if it says like deal X damage and gain X life and if it's too much they can just change the code so it's like deal less damage and gain less life. Right. And they can do that, but they, they do in fact do that. Right. Where and we it's not you can't really do that. Because it's based in paper. Because it's based in paper. Right. But you can flip the switch for on and off, mm-hmm. at least online, easier than you can just flip the switch in paper where someone physically bought the card and Correct. was holding it. And you're like, uh, I just bought these three right. cards. Right. I mean, it's it's a lot different than Oracle text. Techn- I guess yeah. Oracle text is in a way. And we've done that. We've done Oracle text, right? So some cards say things, but it really means something else. Mm-hmm. And, um, or and adding we- creature types to cards. They yeah. added Noble to a bunch of cards exactly. when Throne of Eldraine came out. Yep. Yep. Um, keywording things or Mm -hmm. or making them read clearly Mm -hmm. um there's one card that i play in commander and i always man i wish i could remember it right now it is it's like you scry is it scry to draw draw then draw a card but you one of them says you can like in between you can also shuffle your library preordain oh there's a card that written in the old way yeah it says that you would shuffle your library at the end and one of them doesn't. I, I'll, I'll have to look it up, but there's a card that has text that the, the card doesn't actually do. It was like either oh, okay. a misprint or they took it off. Yeah. I can't remember. I, I always like seeing people's uh, old copies of Sylvan Library and the new copies of Sylvan Library because the old copy has a zero mana activated ability is how it is shown on the old card. Oh, really? Yeah. I only have the new one, yeah. so I've never seen that Some, old Someone one. had the old one. I think um, our buddy Ryan has the old one, and he had it out, and Torin was looking at it, and he just goes, what does that card do? And I was holding like a new one, and I just like kind of handed it to him. like, this is what the card does. Like, oh. they, they fixed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the suspension you know i guess other other games can do it easier easier than we can but right. it sounds like um we're going to try this out and see if it works i like it yeah I, I i don't hate it um and then there is um there's a historic event coming uh two of them actually historic artisan um from december 20th to december 30th they're bringing the artisan format which is common and uncommon cards only to historic that's next week Mm -hmm. you enter for 2500 gold or 500 gems play as much as you want uh your first five wins net you five card styles for wild growth walker gutter snipe cast down curious obsession and militia bugler Mm -hmm. um and it does not look like there is any loss losses yeah it just just says the first five five wins I, i don't believe there's any like you get kicked out after like certain number of losses um Dominaria ranked draft is back, um, which is exciting. Great format. I love drafting draft. that format. Yeah, um, always play Sapperlings. That's that was like my thing. <laughs> if you get a slime foot, draft it because he's <laughs> uh, win con alone. Yep. Because he'll make the Sapperlings, and then and then when those lose, he pings. That card alone can win games. Yep. Um, they said that it's following the same entry fee as other ranked draft formats. Um, and they know that this one has been uh, one of the most popular in recent years. And they did say, if not ever, um, and is a great way for players to expand their historic collection. Yeah. And then there's the historic challenge. 
Um, from January 11th to the 13th, they're introducing the Historic Challenge, a constructed best of three event uh, with high entry fees, though, but high prizes to match. Mm -hmm. So it costs 10,000 gold or 2,000 gems to enter. So that is higher than most. Um, you can play till you have eight wins or three losses, whichever comes first. And the Historic Boosters will be evenly divided between the non or the four non-standard sets on Arena. So... Um, Basically, if you play, you get four historic individual card and rewards and then the card treasure hunt yep. um, and, and as a card sleeve. And then it goes all the way up to eight wins. You get 15,000 gold, 40 boosters, uh, four treasure... Or, um, sorry, you get a treasure hunt and Gaia's Cradle card sleeves. Yeah. So if you get eight wins... I, I, I don't... Good on you. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a 40 lot. 40 historic boosters. So they're divided evenly. So you get 10 of each non-standard set that's currently on Arena. Mm -hmm. Do you play historic on Arena? I don't know. I, I Right now, I'm just playing ladder or just to hit my daily quests right now. Mm -hmm. I like playing draft on Arena, um, but I've been playing in paper more, so I haven't been using my right. gems and stuff on, on Arena. I'm holding them for the next set. It'd be fun. And then the um, the last item on here is uh, deck sorting. Thank goodness. Yeah. So it says, as they continue to expand on the variety of events and formats that Arena supports, um, they've become aware that it's dawning to keep track of which new deck is your new deck versus the new deck that is your brawl new deck when actually you were just thinking of the imported <laughs> deck number three, <laughs> which is funny. I import a lot just to okay. see how many wild cards I'd have to spend. Sure. To make a deck, I'm like, uh, you know, check out the uh, arena metagame, arena yeah. standard. Yeah. I'm like, okay, let's let's copy and paste this. And it's like, you need to use seven rares. And I'm like, nah. No, thanks. I'm going to pass on that one for now. Yeah. Um, so it says, questionable uh, decisions <laughs> regarding deck naming aside, starting with December. Uh, the December update, you can sort your decks by format, color identity, alphabetical, or last modified, or in any combination of the above. That's wonderful. It's great. I don't know how many uh, new deck parenthesis six parenthesis <laughs> and, and so on that I have. Um, obviously, this won't help me with the uh, alphabetical order, but it'll be nice to have that. It, it will be. So the the game update uh, will happen on December twelfth. Do they have an easy way for you to delete decks? Yeah, like, there's a button right at the bottom that says delete. Yeah, I know, but can I like highlight? <laughs> can I highlight like fifteen <laughs> decks and then delete all of them at the same time? No. Uh, Wizards of the Coast. You, you want to push like community, like shift, yeah, and then click like in like an Outlook, yeah, or just like highlight, just like <laughs> drag and highlight. All Control of them. Shift A. Automatically delete all pre-constructed decks. No, you know what? Some of them are good. I just don't play them pre personally. Yeah, you can remove. You have to click on how many decks do you have that you, you're having? I don't delete them. I have so many. Oh, of them. so many that are saying this is no longer legal. Yeah, and sometimes mm, I have quite a few of those actually. They're just grayed out. They are grayed out, and I cannot play them anymore. And they're not legal in Brawl because they play four of of lands. Oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah. No, I don't know. I I think the delete's fine. I Wizards of the Coast <laughs> Arena programmers, please satiate my appetite for deleting decks thank you if you listen thank you if if you listen and comply or not comply thank you either way <laughs> for all the work that you do <laughs> you know what grinds my gears no andy what grinds your gears <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta say it like that i don't know it just came to me <laughs> that's our next segment yeah. But it's just, we, we didn't have a good name for it. Like, yeah. So we're going to have a different name every time. And then you can let us know which one you like the most. Yeah. In the style of, you know what? Gets my goat. Yeah. But we're going to relate them to magic. I mean, I, I mean, the, we're, they're all we're, magic related. We're all ma they're all magic related. And we're going to talk about things that really just, just, they get to us when we're playing in a, in a commander pod. Some of the things that other people may do. And maybe we were at fault of them in the past, but we've fixed our ways. And if we don't, we need to tell each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. Can I go first? Yeah. Uh, you know what really strip mines my cabal coffers? When That's it, really specific, <laughs> but okay. 
Okay. Uh, when an opponent digs their finger into one of my cards when they're pointing at it, like instead of just like lightly tapping the card, like when you're when you're referring to some like an activated ability that something my card does, you know, you could you could hover over it too. You don't actually need to touch the card if you don't have to. Um, I've just heard some horror stories of people with like maybe a little bit longer fingernails, <laughs> like doing this and and actually denting people's cards through the sleeves. If someone did that to like my Mox Diamond or something, I, I'd be, I'd You'd be, be frustrated. pretty upset. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, that's kind of related to one of mine, but mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't disagree that um, it, it happens, mm-hmm. and I, I friendly, I, I, I do the friendly reminder all the time. Yeah. Let me just say mine, then we can have this full conversation sure, together. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> you know what really stifles my fetch land? Uh, people grabbing my cards without asking. Yeah. So they're they're really similar. Mm-hmm. Like just people touching your cards in yeah. general. Yeah. Uh, most of the time it's not a big deal, but I've had a few times where someone grabs the card and they're not that gentle with it. Right. They just kind of like snatch it off the table, or they don't ask. Just ask. Please ask. You know, if I if I if I lay down something, if you don't know what it is, just go. What is that? Just, and then maybe I'll hand it to you. Oh. Yeah, or I'll just explain it. Or I do that thing with like two fingers and yeah, you just you like flip it around whoop. real quick and, you're, and then you slide it towards them. Yeah. You don't have to pick it up. That is I mean, you, you're fine picking it up. Yeah. It's fine. Just nicely. And most of the time it's a non-expensive card, so I'm not that worried about it. Sure. But, but no one asks when you play like, you know, a forest. That's <laughs> I'd be, true. I'd be fine if you were accidentally denting or ripping out of play my forest but yeah. please don't do it with my foils like my foil smothering tithe or or whatever right yeah don't just reach over and grab it it's... um you know and i thought about this a lot when i play my cube oh, because yeah. you're playing with people so far i've only played with people i know yeah um and that's okay mm-hmm. and i've thought about it and i've done a lot of research and it's like do you create a rule set for your cube like maybe laminate and bring it it's like okay when you're playing the cube don't don't eat Cheetos and then play like with my car. You know, like, I mean, it's fine. You know, I get it. And I think all of our friends are understandable. And I say, yeah. you know, <laughs> we actually, we actually, were eating pizza the last <laughs> yeah. time. Yes. And I got grease on my box and I was really mad about that. But no, we, he, Coyle actually asked when last time he brought out chips and cheese and goes, yeah. do you want these out here? Andy, it's your cube. I, I get, and I was like, uh, you know what? No. Cause I was like, there's a lot, I'm like it's going to take more time to move everything over. And then, I wanted to count out some cards. I hand them to Coil, and we almost dropped them in the cheese and the salsa. Yep. And and we were like, okay, let's move these. We're gonna now move we're going to move them. So, like, I don't know if anybody else that plays a cube or has a cube or drafts with people or plays commander with other people has mm-hmm. this issue. But do you address with rule sets when you play a cube? Um, I even thought about, like, a little printout that I could just type up and, like, laminate and just be like... There's basic rules like don't bend the cards when you're holding. There's a lot of people that hold cards like like curved. Do you know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, I do. Like I play with re- regular decks of cards when people play like Euchre, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a Midwest card game. Yes. Um, and, <laughs> and Not Pinochle. Not Pinochle. And you shuffle them and you look at it and you're like, well, I know this is an ace of spades because it's completely warped at this point because someone held it so aggressively. aggressively. Yeah. And I've thought about that with the cube. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's hard. It's hard because it's your friends. And for that, I didn't worry about it. Sure. But I was like, if I want to draft with people at the game shop that I don't mm-hmm. know all that well, yeah. should I should I lay out ground rules? I'm assuming the answer should be yes, especially if you're playing with expensive cards. Yeah. Which I have a lot in there. It's true. Because um, you're like foiling it all out and stuff. So, yeah. 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 It, you, you know what really counters my laboratory maniac? Mansplaining oracle texts or the stack. <laughs> Or layers, especially when they're wrong. I mean, there's just been so many instances where it's like, oh, yeah, I play this card. It's like, what's it reads? Like, well, this is how it reads. And then someone else like, yeah, but the Oracle text, was like, I, I was going to get there. But you kind of jumped the gun on me a little bit. Like, let the person explain the card. And if if there's anything questionable, if you if you see someone else that maybe there is Oracle text for that card, they may or may not know there's Oracle text for that card. Ask the question. If you phrase it as a question rather than telling them what their card does, it seems more polite. And then, you know, if you need to call a judge over to explain the ruling, they're the only ones that have official ruling for this kind of thing. So, And obviously this would be at a 
specific event. Uh, the other thing you can do is just look it up on Scryfall for your Oracle text. But mm-hmm. just don't don't be a jerk about it and just say, you know, I think that card might do this because of Oracle text, even if you know. Just because it just seems so much kinder. Don't be rude. Don't be a rude dude or lad or lady or... That's really similar to my next one. Again, clearly we have the same pet peeve. Yeah. We play the same group. Is it me? Are you... Am I the one? It's all Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's definitely not mansplaining. It's not. <laughs> you, know what, uh, you know what really warps my foils? Foils? Uh, you sh- humidity? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Sorry. Non-sleeve? <laughs> um, no, it's when... It's... It's when folks don't make it clear that they're moving between phases mm-hmm. and they like play a land and then they're like past turn. And I was like, Oh, hold on before combat. Actually yeah. main phase, phase one. Yeah. Main phase one. I need to do something. Yep. And then, and then something else is going to happen and then I'm going to do something like before your end step. Mm-hmm. Or when I, when I know I have mana floating for some reason and then, and then they just move to end. And I was like, Oh, hold on. Yeah. I've got, I've got mana that's going to leave my mana pool mm-hmm. at the end of phase and I need to use it. Yeah. So um, I find that I do this and I normally, I'm not going to say it all the time, but I find that uh, more more often than not, when it gets my turn, I say untap, upkeep, draw. I don't say main phase one. Right. It, that, that one's it's a little implied. obvious. It's yeah. implied, but sure. Um, but then I will say uh, combat. And then if even if I'm not swinging, I'll mm-hmm. go end combat. Just because there's a lot of people that in Commander need to do a lot of stuff yep. on your turns. Um, we, we ha- we've we played with people before where um, they play their land, then draw their card. And I was like, okay, you wait. You got to do you that. Ju- you got to do it order. in the opposite order. Even you, for you, you should be doing it in the opposite order. You, know, you could top deck better land. You, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and we've seen people do it. Like, oh, I'm not going to play this one then. It's just... Yeah. You know, so start saying it out loud. You'll be a better player yep. yourself. Agreed. The way you say it. Um, you'll remember if you have upkeep triggers, and then you'll remember if you have, like, to cast a spell if you have mana in your pool before it empties, yeah. specifically. And I think that as you say it out loud, mm-hmm. if you have upkeep triggers, mm-hmm. you know, I stick a die on top of my. It's deck. a really good reminder. I have to, because I'll look at it and go, why do I have this? Yep. And. If someone passes their turn and you untap and you go, wait, no, I before I have to do this at the end of your turn. Yeah. In Commander, first off, no one should be stopping you and saying, nope, you missed it. Right. No, it's obvious that you needed to do it. That's why you have a big die sitting on top of your deck. Yep. Um, say your phases. It's, yep. it's going to make it easier for literally everyone. There, There is a lot of times, I'll be honest, I don't play a lot of decks that swing. Uh, so a lot of times I don't say I'm moving to combat, but I'll say, I always say now, and I make it a a point to say, I'm going to move to my end step. Um, But if someone says, well, like I have something for your main phase one, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, I didn't do anything in between. Yeah. That's fine. Um, Or if I'm tapping mana during someone's main phase, because let's say they go to blow up one of my mana rocks or something and I have to float the mana, I will remind them. I'll say, "Um, let me know when you move to combat because I don't want the the mana to float away. I have something I want to do with it. Right. Yep. Um, you know what really imprison in the moons my commander? <laughs> <laughs> Yours are so much more specific. Can we call this segment Imprisons in the Moon My Commander? <laughs> Imprisons in oh. the Moon My Commander. <laughs> uh telling someone how to play their deck or do something else on their turn. Like uh, telling them they're not doing it right? Telling them they're not doing it right, telling them you should have done this instead of this. That kind of thing. One, you you don't know what's in their hand, so you don't know what they're they're trying to do. And two, if they're if they're playing their deck quote unquote incorrectly, one, commanders to have fun. Maybe they're just trying to have fun. Uh, the other day at the shop, I decided not to play my uh, Jace Wielder of Mysteries or Laboratory Maniac as win cons because I didn't want to win that way. I wanted the game to go on a little bit longer and just have some fun. Feels kind of empty sometimes, doesn't it? It it feels real empty. Yeah. Especially in our Commander League where you get less points for doing it. But, you know, there's that. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe they have reasons for doing it. And if not, there's always friendly ways to say, hey, um, can I make a suggestion? Like, I saw this interaction. I don't know if you had something else. Um, I, I play this in one of my decks, if you do, and say, you know, this interaction works this way and it would be really powerful. I don't know if maybe you had something 
else to do though, but maybe next time if you have that. And and they might say, oh yeah, I had that interaction, but you know, I had brainstorm in hand and I wanted to get rid of the top card of my library. I, I've also had someone <clears throat> play play something where it didn't do the intended effect that they wanted. Mm-hmm. Like they, they thought that if they, I don't know, blew up a creature for some reason, it would stop something from activating or for some trigger to go off. Sure. And you're like that, wait, that's not actually going to do that. Right. I, I am very much in the mindset of take back your card. Yeah. You, you did not know it was not going to work that way or that's, you know, <clears throat> that's, I treat that more like a judge call in my opinion because yeah, they could have just called the judge and said, if I do this, is it going to do X? Right. If the judge says no, they wouldn't have done it. This is just like that because they clearly did not intend, their intention was for this outcome and it wasn't going to happen either way. So right. just let them have their card back. It's on them because now we technically know one more card in their yeah, hand. You, I mean, they still have it maybe in a competitive environment. Sure. You would you would say like, oh, that was a mistake. You, th- this is learning the hard way. But in a casual environment, don't be that guy. Give them their card back. Now you know what's in their hand. Rightio. Now save up that counterspell. I'm trying to think of other things to say than sure because I, I hear it now. I've been told I say sure a lot and mm-hmm. I think I've said it a few times this episode. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I thought about writing a list of of other words for sure was radio. <laughs> I've been told at work I'm the guy who says coolio after things. Do you? Yeah, I say coolio because it's like you don't say that outside of work. I don't think I've ever heard you say coolio. I think I text it sometimes. Maybe, maybe in the group chat. I'm not thinking of the rapper either. I'm just like saying like instead of just saying like cool, I'll be like sweet coolio. Just give a thumbs up. But the, do thumbs up in real life. So instead, noise. Of, instead of talking, you just go, yeah, no ice indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I can just be, I can just be the the twenty seven year old boomer in the office and just give thumbs up and say no ice, no ice <laughs> to everyone around. Yeah, I need to think of other words to say than sure. Mm-hmm. What are some other words? <laughs> yes, I guess yes does work. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. You just use that. That's true. Correct. The word correct works. These is true. You do say that a lot. I do when we're playing magic, especially in a Russian accent for absolutely no reason. (laughs) Other than I might have been watching episodes of Glow, and I think I had Soya the Destroya in my mind. And so I would say, this is true. Every time someone's like, is that how that interaction works? Like, yeah, it does. Like, oh, yeah, it's easy as true. <laughs> I could say without a doubt. Without a doubt. Correct. I sure. Think, assuredly. Assuredly. Yeah. I think there's a, a point in the Forsaken novel where there's a bunch of Orzhov people standing around and they keep repeating the same things. And one's like, assuredly, without a doubt absolutely you know it can i just look up synonyms for sure yeah get your get your thesaurus out clearly that one seems very condescending though clearly clearly uh, duh. <laughs> duh just say duh obvious after duh. Duh. duh 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 <laughs> hey hey guess what you know you know what really what really fogs my combat? Ooh. It's when it's when someone plays a card and starts to read it, and someone cuts them off because they already know what the card does, mm-hmm. and they either explain it faster than you, just because they're like trying to keep the game going yep. for no reason, or they just know, and it might be your first time playing the card, yeah, or your or the first time someone else at the table is seeing this card. I play a lot of um, corner case cards, yeah, <laughs> like the card view from above in Noyandar or. You know, playing weird cards that don't do anything in other in other decks. Absolutely. You know? um, let let the person read their own card. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because you know doesn't mean everyone else knows. And maybe they're new. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I find people generally ask what the card does if they don't know what it does. Right. I actually I notice this a lot when something when a card has a condition on it, like spell mastery or threshold. Someone will play it and someone will go, what does that card do? And then immediately someone else goes, do you have threshold? Oh, you're like, I was going to, I'm going to get to all of it. I was going to yeah. say, I get to search for, you know, what Nissa's pilgrimage. It's yeah. search for two. But if you have spell mastery, which is if you have, is it 
three or more or is it two three, or more? Three or more instances of sorcery in your graveyard. In your graveyard. And you go, th- so you explain it and you go, but it has spell mastery, which I have. Mm-hmm. I've met the condition. You would, mm-hmm. you would just show it. And then you would say, because I have that, I get to do this now instead. Yeah. Um, it, let people explain their own cards. Yeah. <laughs> and it gives them satisfaction too. And then you can see if they have that like grin on their face, like they're about to combo off with this card or something as they're explaining it. Like, well, I have Niv Mizzet, and if I draw a card, then it does <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> sometimes you, you start to read it and then. And then you find the tables arguing over what it does. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you three arguing about what my card does? Because it's a nothing card. Yeah. But I, I sometimes, I also like to just read it out loud because as many times as I've, as I've played Farseek, I never remember which ones it allows me to go get. Is that, yeah. that's the, you can search and it's got four basic land types that on it. That isn't a forest. That isn't a forest. Yeah. So, yeah. Not, but I always read it and I go, okay, go grab yourself an X, Y, or, you know, yep. one of those. Yep. But I say it out loud and someone always is like, you just can't grab this. Oh, oh. okay. Yeah. But the more I read it, <laughs> the yeah. less I'm going to have to read it out loud. Yeah. And if you already know what it does, then great. Calm down. You need to calm down. Just it's a game of magic. I'm casting a sorcery at sorcery speed, which I understand is slower you than You're supposed to speed. say you need to calm down. You're you're being too loud. You're being you're, what? Is that from something? Taylor Swift's you need you need to calm down. You're being too loud. I have a blank space. And I was like, uh oh. We Duh. are <laughs> never, ever, ever That's a good song too. I only know the mainstream T Swift. I, I mean, me too. Or are those other ones mainstream and I just am painting yes. myself into a corner right yeah, now? Yeah, even producer Ryan's like, uh, he's embarrassed of you. He's shaking his head yes and like slouching. He's like, you guys oh my like, goodness. Do you guys like the Swedish metal that I listen to too? <laughs> I'm not aware of it really. <laughs> but every time you play music, I don't know what it is. Most of the time when I play music with us, it's like summer hits of the 90s what's that one what's that one ska song that i always talk about that i like i don't know it's probably by real big fish though it's the only ska (laughs) band that i know (laughs) no no i think one time i asked you if it was ska and you said can you do can you what's that one dance the charlie brown no not the charlie brown what's that other one what's it called called Skanking. skanking skanking And I was like, it's like the, it's like running in place, but yes, also kicking that, your legs out in front of you. <laughs> that dance. And I was like, you can do that to this. And you're like, yeah. it's, ska, it's ska music. You're like you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. I bet it was a real big fish song. I'm going <laughs> to, now I want to know what that song was. It was, um, it's played a lot when you watch people streaming magic, actually. Yeah. It's just a good song. I think Gwen Stefani, honestly, used to be in a ska band. Going all the way back to the beginning of the episode for my intro. Which ska band? Uh, n- um, not one that's around anymore. It was her. It was the band she was in before she went solo. I th- no doubt. Is that ska? Wait, that was no doubt. It was a no doubt. Isn't ska? that one? Isn't that? That's what I can say instead of sure. No doubt. No doubt. Indeed, Gwen Stefani. No, I'm going to have to think of Gwen Stefani <laughs> instead of the word sure. <laughs> <laughs> we are connecting every part of this episode to this we're very coming moment. full circle folks full circle full of it is that the song full circle i don't know what oh i thought you just are. found the song you were looking for oh no. well while you look for that yeah we hope you enjoyed that last segment. And if you liked any of those, if you liked any of those you names, liked it. <laughs> tell us what we should call this in the future. I still like the, uh, you know what, warps my foils because <laughs> everyone can relate. Yeah, that's what, and, and, when we were talking about this, Andy texted me, he's like, you know what really warps my foils? And I just respond, foils. Because <laughs> I hate foils. I, oh, you know, and it feels bad, though. The Throne of Eldraine was great. The cardstock, yeah. when you open it, but it's like, sometimes you open a foil, and if you, I ha- I bought a dehumidifier for the game room, mm-hmm. because that's one time, idea. yeah, I, it was small, it was like 25 bucks. Um, if you if you leave foil cards sitting out and they weren't in a sleeve, which they weren't, they were just on the dresser. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a little dresser in that room where I store all the magic cards. I came in the next day. I mean, they were, they were warped, warped. They were, it was, it was, 
I actually showed I actually showed people and they were like that that was one day I said um I we have a we have an attic fan at our house and mm-hmm. I didn't want to use the air conditioning this was over the summer so I opened the attic fan and I you have to crack all the windows in the house so you can turn around it pulls all the air in yep. well it was it was humid out and yeah. I didn't even think about it honestly and well now I do mm-hmm. for that room I have to have a dehumidifier which honestly I had to empty at least once a week yeah there's that much you know moisture in the moisture air. in the air in yeah. that room so you know you keep your cars from 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 warping but then mm-hmm. you get nosebleeds when you're streaming i mean <laughs> <laughs> people just think you're really intense <laughs> i love this game so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm starting to learn about uh foil warping with my morophon deck because uh it turns out they didn't print a lot of those cards in non-foil what what are you talking about? My Morophon uh, multicolor tribal. What? But what cards weren't printed in non foil? All, all of the four mana commanders. Oh yeah. Okay. So those those sure. Yeah, the Ur Dragon. No doubt. Duh. No doubt. Duh. Sure. I heard that sure in there. Uh huh. I'm bringing it right back up. <laughs> uh, if you say assuredly, you get to say sure and also not sure at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that brings us to our last segment. Commander of the Week, which I'm going to do this week. You are doing it this week. And um, we're going to talk about my budget deck that I built um, for our budget series. We're going to be recording some gameplay in the next, hopefully, few weeks. Yeah. Um, and so uh, on my quest to continue my guilds, um, I built Selesnia. So I have Talsamir, Friend to Wolves, um, a Selesnia deck, uh, and its tokens which I, I do play a lot of, but I figured I would do wolf tokens instead yep. of Tristani, like populate tokens. And mm-hmm. then the Amera new, um, I think she makes soldiers. Yeah. Lifelink. <clears throat> Lifelink soldiers. Yep. Um, so, uh, I didn't want to do that. So I decided to do the other one. Um, so Tulsimer is a three, three, uh, elf scout for two green, green and white. Uh, it says when he enters the battlefield, create Voha friend to elves, a legendary three, three green and white wolf. And it also says whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life. And then that creature fights up to one target creature. You don't control. So they each uh, deal their power and toughness to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully your three, three is bigger than whatever they have. Um, yeah. So uh, built this as a tribal token deck. So wolves and tokens. Um, so not surprising for me playing tribal or tokens nope. in commander, I guess. Yep. Um, and uh, the point is to play wolves, fight my opponent's creatures so I can hopefully have a better board state and then swing out. Mm-hmm. Now we upped the budget after we built this. We initially had talked about $25 decks and then we said, well, let's just do 50 this time. Right. And so I built it with $25 in mind. And I think right now it's at 30. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've got some wiggle room with 20 bucks and you, you can go a long way with $20 in you a budget sure deck. Can. Um, so I, I have to make some improvements, honestly. So when we post the deck list tomorrow, you'll see, you'll see it's probably, it's got room for improvement. So mm-hmm. let, let me know what you would add. If you had $20 to add to this, let me know what you'd add. Just put um, more shards in it. I do play glare of subdual. So I guess I can at least tap stuff down, but it doesn't destroy artifacts and enchantments. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if that is necessary it's in not. a budget. It's definitely not play. No, it's not. Um, so for the wolf support, I have lots of synergy there. Um, the ones that I like the most though are master of the wild hunt. So a three, three, four, two green, green at the beginning of your upkeep, create a two, two green wolf. And then it also has tap to tap all untapped wolf creatures. You control each wolf tap this way deals damage equal to its power to target creature. And then that creature deals damage uh, equal to its power divided as its controller chooses among all of your wolves. Hmm. So um, there's a chance that they might take out one or two, mm-hmm. but there's uh, an even better chance that most of yours are just going to live. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other card that I really like in this deck is um, the silver for partisan. So silver for partisan is I'm trying to pull this card up right now as I'm looking at this. Mm-hmm. Um, a two two with trample for two and a green, uh, a wolf warrior that has whenever a wolf or werewolf you control becomes the target of an instant or sorcery spell, you make a two two green wolf. Huh. 
So you just make more if they target your stuff. Um, and then the last one is the Wolf Skull Shaman, which I don't think a lot of people play, honestly. Um, it has kinship. And I want to read the Oracle text on, um, on, on kinship uh, for, for this one. Sometimes it's kinship to, yeah, at the beginning of your upkeep, you okay. do this. So Wolf Skull Shaman is a 2-2 two, two for one and a green, an elf shaman. So it's not a wolf itself, but okay. it says at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it shares a creature type with Wolf Skull Shaman, um, you may reveal it. If you do, you create a 2-2 two, two green wolf. Hmm. So I have some other elves and I think I also have maybe one or two shamans mm -hmm. in here, but in the off chance that you do get to make a wolf, the card's not expensive. Right. And I think the card's less than 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> so I just decided to throw it in there so I can make some more wolves. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so then that, so that's, those are the top few that I liked for that. So to support tokens, I've got some standard, these are more, um, staples for token decks mm -hmm, i have intangible mm -hmm. virtue which one in a way it gives your uh creature tokens plus one plus one in vigilance yep, yep. Uh, growing ranks and enchantment uh that says at the beginning of your upkeep you populate so you create a uh token that's a copy of a creature token you control gotcha and then sundering growth uh for hybrid green white green white so just for two uh it destroys an artifact or enchantment and then it populates so again you just make mm -hmm. another you make a copy of a token that you already have yeah um and then I run some anthems, so things that give pump effects to your creatures, plus mm -hmm. one, plus one. So I've got Marshall's Anthem is plus one, plus one, has an ability to bring some stuff back from your graveyard to play by paying some extra mana. Spare of Heliod, which gives plus one, plus one, and then it has an additional ability where you can pay, uh, I believe it's white, white, and colorless, and tap it, and you can destroy a creature that dealt damage to you this turn. That's correct. And then Dictate of Heliod, it has flash, but it gives your creatures plus two, plus two. I think that costs five. Gotcha. Um, but just to make your wolves bigger, so... If you already have one of those out, when you play your commander, that 3-3 three, three wolf comes in with that pump. Right. So it would come in as a, maybe a 4-4 four, four, or even potentially a 5-5 five, five, or a 6-6, six, six, depending mm -hmm. on how many you have. And then at that point, you're pretty safe to say you can fight anything you're gonna else. You're going to punch something real hard. Yeah. Um, with a wolf punch. And since we're in green-white, we're going to play some ramp and rocks. Ra I mean, as, as you should play some rocks. But I think I have nine. So I've got Cultivate, Farseek, Rampant Growth, um, and this is pilgrimage as the spells. And then I have Selesnya Signet, Mana Geode, Talisman of Unity, and Selesnya Key Rune. Okay. Uh, so I have enough. The commander does cost five. It's a little expensive. So, But you do get two bodies and a lot of power on both those bodies, right? It, it's six power. Yeah. Six power, six toughness among the two. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, and three life. Yeah. And you might knock someone else's creature out if they have a 2-2. Two, two. It's a lot of value for five mana. It is. It is. But then it costs seven. <laughs> and <laughs> yep. then it costs nine. Yeah. And you're like, I, I don't have this. So you, you have to play some of that. 37 lands mm -hmm. and then just a bunch of other wolves. And that's really um, how I built that. So, so you've played this deck a few times already. I did. And I won once. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have won twice, but I made a deal. So I did not swing. That's true. I had, I literally had the kill on board and I said, okay, I won't swing yeah. this turn. And I died the next turn. Um, but did you, but, did you find that the deck lacked in anything or uh, card draw, but I did okay. add guardian project okay. to, to it. Hopefully that'll, that'll do some work. Um, and now that I think I have, uh, well, I know, I don't think I know I have some, some, uh, wiggle room with, with the cost. Right. I can add cards like Shamanic Revelation to draw a card for each green creature you control. Mm -hmm. And then you gain four life for each each creature you control that has power four or greater. Yep. So if I do have a bunch of wolves and I do have maybe an anthem, I might be able to draw four or five cards and maybe even gain like 12 to 16 life. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that card does cost four or five. Shamanic Revelation, I feel like the card costs, <coughs> excuse me, um, is it three colorless and green green? Or is it two colorless and green green? Either way, um, you play that. I think that's needed. Guardian Project itself is going to get that. Yeah, it's three green green. So yep. um, I think adding that, some people play the card Harmonize. I don't like Harmonize, but it draws. So, I mean, sh it works. Yeah. Um, and then... What about like Rishkar's Expertise? If you're really pumping your creatures up like that. To draw, I mean, sure. And then you get a free permanent out too? No doubt. 
Yeah, no doubt. Assuredly. Assuredly. Um, I, I like the, I like Rishkar's expertise. Yeah, I do too. I think it's underplayed, but it does cost six, but you it do get to six. cast a card for five right after you play it. So yep. it's not so bad. Right. Um, and hopefully I will have out a few. If you can get the, if you can get it, like the ball rolling. Yeah. The deck feels really good. Mm-hmm. If you can't, because it's not, I don't believe it's an option. Hold on. I just want to check this. Yeah, no, it's not an option. So the creature, the, the creature token has to fight. Yeah, must fight. No matter what. So mm-hmm. even a token, even, even you'll play, I think I have like a wolf pup in here. Mm. I think it's a two one or a one two. It has to fight. Is that the one with undying? It's not the wolf with them. No, I think it's it? the new really cute one from War of the Spark oh. or whichever side. No. Um, so that that is one downside. Yeah. Is if your creatures are outclassed, yours are just going to die when they come in if, if Talsamir is out. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's some tricky things, but it, I think overall from what, I've, from what I have played of the deck, I like it. I like what it does. Um, there's nothing tricksy going on, so I have to win through combat damage. So if you, if you don't... If you don't like that, this is not likely the deck for you. Right. Um, but if you do want to play a deck that no one else is really playing, mm-hmm. this might be the deck for you. And it's tokens. Tokens are fun. Tokens are fun. To and there's a lot of ways around. to go. And if you have the stuff to make tokens better, if you already own Doubling Season and you already own... Anointed Procession. Anointed Procession. If you already own all those, mm-hmm. then obviously throw them in. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking for a budget deck that... If you if you've played standard recently, you have a lot of these. A lot of the yeah. wolf cards are in the standard sets. Yeah. And if you've played since I don't know, the Ravnica block like I have, or even just before, because the Innistrad block gave you a lot more. Yeah. With you might wolves. almost have all of the cards for this deck. Yeah. So check it out. Very cool. And that's our episode this week. Yeah, that was a fun one. It was a good one. Um I mean, we think so. We think so. We and hope if, you liked it. We yeah, we do. We hope you like it. I mean, otherwise, you probably wouldn't come back. You would. You. We <laughs> hope you ass- assuredly like it. Assur- assuredly. <laughs> so, thank you for listening. And if you want to contact us, you can find our podcast on Twitter at Guardian Pod. You can find me at At Flory. You can find me at Squeaky Pig M. Uh, take a look for hashtag Guardian Project Pod to find our posts and episodes. And we like to hear from you. So, send along your comments and any topics you'd like us to talk about and we'll go over those on the next episode and you can also email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com uh if you have any anything else you want to share yeah if you're going to uh command fest dc have fun good luck and next week we're going to do our christmas episode and brian's going to come back yay and we're going to talk about um mechanics or cards or play styles we haven't we haven't we haven't um completely solidified what we want to do but Mm -hmm. we're going to determine whether or not it's going to put you on santa's naughty or nice list yeah so we're really excited so i play naughty cards i think i play i think i play a fair mix you do you do play a fair mix so we will see you all next week we won't see you we'll hopefully hear from you next week and you'll hear from us santa will see you though he sees you when you're sleeping and he knows when you're not sleeping that's right because I could have said he knows when you're awake. <laughs> but that was, that's too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> do, you, do you play this in your wolf deck? I'm pretty sure I do. Okay. He's a big boy. He comes in as an 8-8. It makes, uh, <laughs> makes something nice. else uh, uh, huge, too. Yeah. It's good. I... I Twenty dollars is going to make this a lot different. Yeah, just put in doubling season. No, for that's twenty dollars, yeah. I could probably add parallel lives though. In yeah, there. parallel.